This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> Two of this video I've taken quite a lot of time to try and kind of figure this stuff out for you and get it to a place where I can play it um, I guess maybe bookmark this video save it somewhere um, this together with part one covers I think most of the cool licks that Matteo Mancuso played in the Rick Beato video there's actually nine of them um, I'm going to show you with the tab on screen how to play them uh, as best I can uh, Patreon will be the place to grab backing track that you just saw me playing over trying to put some of them in context as well as the actual tab itself but hopefully you'll be able to get something out of this video uh, if yeah if you want to leave a comment or something to help the algorithm along or leave a like share it with a friend if you think they could get something useful out of this hopefully it's something that someone somewhere finds useful I guess the idea with a lot of this stuff is not necessarily to imagine that you're going to be able to play it quite as clean or as well as Matteo Mancuso, but I think in the end, it's not so much about being Matteo Mancuso as it is about the friends we made along the way. Um, so the first line that I wanted to break down was actually the one that first made me think about doing this video at all. <laughs> um, and it's a quarter line. I'm hearing it as being in A. probably okay and this is one of the things that he talks about being quite difficult for people who don't play with his finger style so it makes a good exercise now there are a few ways you could play this I'll start off with the notes is shape one so we get five five four four okay and then jump to the seventh fret and play four uh, sorry seven seven important to get the fingering right here so kind of kind of slow this down and look at it that's what we get here so seven bar seven seven nine ten seven twelve Then 12, 7, 10, 9, then 10, 10, 9, 9, 12, 12, then all the way up, 
12, 12, 12, 14, 15, 12, 17. You could either sweet pick this or alternate pick. But just take it slowly. And it hopefully will start to make a bit more sense. Um, just make sure you've got your fingers lined up to do what they need to do to get the line out. And yeah, give it some time. Hard. Uh, get your metronome out, basically. Depending on how you sweep it, you might find that works better for you, but I'm quite liking the um, accuracy that I can get with, or for me, better timing and accuracy with, with picking. So that's the quartal line. The rest of them are these pretty cool bebop lines. So this first one, we kind of... I end in G and we get this, so... 10, 9, 8, 7, 10, 8, 7, slide which is like a bebop line right or bebop scale even and then we get like a C major kind of thing 8 5 5 so for that part pull down to your point a finger and then kind of move and jump onto your ring uh, middle sorry and then seven six four enclosure eight six then seven and then we go up a minor and then a flat four six five four three and then down and that's basically that one it's a really nice classic bebop scale kind of with some really nice enclosures and as you're playing it uh, for me to memorize it I'm kind of thinking about those things that look familiar to me so looking for that sort of thing. Okay, then we get a chromatic line. And this one I'm kind of thinking about as being in B minor. Um, we start the line kind of one, two, three, four. Like that. This is uh, one of the slightly easier ones, even though it's not particularly easy. So we're going to start on this six, slide up to the seven, ten, nine, eight, seven, ten, nine, seven, 
nine six seven seven six five four seven six four so that goes seven four five just enclosing the, the D there so and so think about the fingering again so you want to land that top maybe on the ring finger or the uh, pinky Then we do kind of a triplet part seven, uh, four, seven, six, five, seven, four, six, seven, five, six, seven, four. Kind of a cliche, the lick. So that one's a nice thing that you could play like over B minor, B Dorian. So. Another one which I kind of think of as being in G, and um, we're going to go one E and a, uh, one one E and a, uh, one E and uh, two. a really nice one but so seven six five down the kind of uh, bebop scale again and then up a minor five four five seven jump down to three, four, three. And this is coming from, for me, I think of that as kind of melodic minor stuff. Three, four, three, six, five, four, three, five. And then we're gonna do a G arpeggio thing. So, two, five, four, two, four, five, four, two. Seven three seven seven three four two five three four five two. faster okay and then there's the daddy at the end which is an even longer line some of this and i think it'd be a really good idea just to take one or two of these at a time if anything it's taken me you know pretty much the week to, to start to get to grips with these um And they're these really 
long lines, it might be worth even breaking them down into smaller little chunks and kind of taking apart the DNA of them. So right, we get this. This one's kind of got a lot of chromaticism in it. And I'm thinking about it uh, sort of as in A minor, but starting on the D minor. Uh, so we go one, two, three, four. That's what it does. But so slowly 10, 10, 12, 13, 11, 12, 11, 10, 13, 12, 11, 10, 12, 9, 10, 9, 12, 10, 11, 12, 8. And notice so you want to be on your index finger by the time you get down there. Slide down to the 7, 10, 8, and end on the C. That's the first bar. Which is really nice in itself. Getting some kind of F melodic minor in there. Okay, and then for the second half of it, we're doing this kind of thing where we go kind of so two notes. Well, there's like a repeating idea here. So we go 7, 10, 9, 8, 10. So that's how the bar starts. before the bar and then the repeating thing is three notes two chromatic down and you're kind of jumping a note seven nine ten nine eight ten seven nine eight eight nine eleven eight ten twelve ten nine and then an A minor arpeggio. Eight, ten, nine, ten. Then seven. Same idea again. Eight, nine, eight, seven. And then down chromatically. Ten, nine, eight, seven, nine, seven, eight, nine, seven. Eight, seven, six, down to nine, five, seven, seven, eight, D. something like that. Uh, that one is the longest and maybe hardest one. Although technically these bebop ones are not actually quite as difficult, I don't think, technically as that kind of thing, or the quarter line, which are more of a kind of technical difficulty thing, whereas the, the bebop lines are just difficult to kind of remember. roughly right I think that was what's going on there eight seven ten nine eight seven nine seven eight nine seven six nine five minor triads there five seven seven 
eight. So yeah, get your click out um, and maybe even practice with Matteo on a kind of half speed is what I've been doing. A few weeks of work in there I think what I would do beyond this point once I'd actually uh, figured out you know how to play them consistently in the one key I might then start to, to move these around uh, and also taking these ideas Try and move that up a fret or two. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, don't just settle on them in one key, but yeah, take one lick maybe uh, per session and kind of scoot it around into different keys and see if you can play it there um, and I think there's an absolute treasure trove of, of stuff within just that interview with Rick Beato of, of Licks. I know for sure that Matteo Mancuso has gone through many 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 years of figuring out Licks in this sort of way of other players for sure whether it's Frank Gambale, Alan Holdsworth um, or you know Charlie Parker it's definitely the sort of thing that this guy has been really studious with um, so it can't hurt us to do something similar, even if we're not playing with exactly the same style, even if we're finding out our own ways. To play the same stuff as him. It might be like a philosoph philosophical... might be a philosophical question for why you might want to do this sort of thing but it's really good uh, stuff for the hands and for exercising even if you don't play exactly as technically as Matteo would with with fingers you can get loads out of this stuff with with a pick or however you play. I hope that was a useful um, kind of thing. Uh, it's a lot of notes, but yeah, maybe bookmark it, uh, you know, take screenshots, do whatever you need to do, share it around, and I'll see you in another video soon. I hope that was useful, hopefully. Cheers. Patreon, the place to get the tab if you don't want to screenshot it. Cheers.